one of the most common questions we get with the uh, 4,000 hertz tone and the 7,500 hertz tone that's presented on, on those videos is why do they, in some cases, cause total relief for the individual listening to it uh, from their tinnitus? So, for example, uh, I have one comment here from a, a viewer of the video that said, thank you so much. I have had tinnitus since I was nine years old. Now I am 25, and for the first time since then, I've been able to enjoy a few seconds without mm -hmm. tinnitus. So, uh, Dr. Brown, can you just jump right on here and, and kind of give us an idea of why someone might experience uh, some temporary relief from hearing a 4,000 hertz or a 7,500 hertz tone as we have presented in these videos? Yeah, I wanna jump in first by saying, this is such a good thing. And it goes back to the name of this company, which is Sound Relief, telling us that sound can be therapeutic. So residual inhibition is what we call this phenomenon. And it's just an explanation of how when people hear a certain sound, it has a calming effect on them and they experience relief from their tinnitus. And that sound can be played for 30 seconds up to their full day and it can have a therapeutic effect on them. Right. So I think, you know, that that term residual inhibition is uh, very scientific, clearly, yeah. and it can um, confuse people at times of exactly what is that meaning. Uh, so like you said, it can create suppression of the tinnitus for a period of time. For a lot of people, that might be less than a minute. Uh, it might be a few seconds. Uh, uh, some people, it could be a few hours or even a day. So you just never know exactly who who would benefit from something like this, who would experience residual inhibition, who wouldn't. Um, so if we think about tinnitus as hyperactivity in the brain, mm -hmm. what do we think the sound is doing in the brain when they listen to something that is similar in pitch to their tinnitus. Any ideas there on, on what we yeah. think might be happening in the brain? What I'm thinking is this goes back to the root cause of tinnitus, which is actually the brain missing some input, missing some auditory input or missing some sound. And so when we give a sound back specifically in a region where it's been missing, I would say that's why they're experiencing relief because I use this example with my patients and it's kind of funny, but I think of the brain like a hungry baby and what it's hungry for is that missing noise. And so when we can give that sound back to the brain, it has a, a calming effect on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think um, our brain is always trying to replace missing input, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's visual or auditory or yeah. somatic. Um, yeah, all, all the different senses. Uh, but then also, I think if you think about it, um, for patients with normal hearing, say they don't have any missing input because their hearing is still normal. I think in those instances, and again, these are all theories, right? Like there's so yeah. much about the brain we don't fully understand, but um, it's it's nice to think through these theories and see how they can logically make sense. But with someone with normal hearing, I think the the tinnitus, so say my tinnitus is very high pitch as well. So my mm -hmm. tinnitus in my left ear is 7,200 hertz when I pitch match it in the sound booth. And so that's close enough to the 7,500 hertz tone that we're presenting in our sound example on the website and on YouTube that uh, when my tinnitus peaks and I turn on this sound, I do get some temporary relief while I'm listening to it. And you know, there's, again, two more theories here, because I do have essentially normal hearing in the left ear, that the tone at 7,500 hertz is interrupting my tinnitus signal at yeah. 7,200 hertz. And so the two are kind of canceling each other out mm -hmm. so that I don't perceive the sound in my head, even though it is being yeah. externally produced from the video. So something there is interrupting the abnormal firing of my auditory nerve, auditory right. cortex in the brain somewhere along that pathway causing the perception of no tinnitus in my head. 
Uh, so there's there's that theory that I think makes sense, especially for people out there who have um, essentially normal hearing and tinnitus, and this works for them. I would like um, to add on to that if you're okay yeah, with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. I, yeah. We both have tinnitus worse in our left ear, which I find very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. But I think there's something very calming about having it be an external sound, like mm. having something yes. in your environment. And when you hear it, you go, ah, that is a sound that I'm hearing. And I know it's coming outside of my head. And for mm-hmm. example, I've noticed that when I'm golfing, I can hear this little noise in the golf cart and it almost exactly matches my tinnitus. And it's very soothing to me. It's like it's interrupting what I'm already hearing in my head, but it's like mm-hmm. validating me. Yes, I'm hearing this from an external source. I think that like has a psychological calming effect on me. Yeah. And I I don't think you're alone in that. I think a lot of people realize that when they can identify a pitch that's similar, but that's definitely coming from the outside world rather than internally from their brain, uh, that they say, oh, okay, well, you know, some other things in this world make a very similar sound. So it, it's, And that sound's not yeah. hurting me, right? Like this right. noise, yeah. in, in, in my case, the golf cart sound is actually very soothing because I love being in that environment. Yeah. Um, right. Positive associations, right? Yeah. We always say we, we want to not attach a negative label, which is so hard because our subconscious nervous system is what's doing the labeling as mm-hmm. this is a threat, this is annoying, this is disturbing. Um, so it's not like we can always consciously control control that. But yeah. like you said, if you find a sound similar, but that has a more calming context, uh, you want to think about that uh, and say, hmm, how, how do we help reclassify my tinnitus as a is similar type of sound that's not threatening, right, and not um, something that can uh, harm me, so to speak. Easier said than done, right? It is. We know. And I guess that's Easier the whole goal of done. tinnitus retraining therapy, right? Yeah. Yes. Help help get the brain reclassify this sound. And and the other um, one other theory that I think is important to kind of point out is. Sometimes all you need to do is introduce a new novel sound, something Mm -hmm. interesting uh, and soothing to distract the brain away from the tinnitus. And in in some of those cases, you'll also see kind of a cancellation effect because now the brain, it's kind of like, again, if you want to use maybe like a toddler analogy, it's Mm -hmm. it's the shiny new penny. So, oh, or the shiny new toy, probably better for a toddler. I got to go look at at this shiny new object instead of being fixated on the one thing, the one thing in this instance being the tinnitus, right? So Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of possibilities here as to why residual inhibition happens and what's going on in the brain. Uh, But we know it's it's a real phenomenon that not everyone experiences though with tinnitus, which is another interesting... um, you know, thought, but that's probably because no two brains are the same, right? I mean, I'm sure you hear it every day, how people react and respond differently to tinnitus uh, in all different types of sounds of tinnitus, right? Absolutely. And that's why we will counsel people that while it's important to have prescriptive sound therapy and have it fit appropriately with your audiologist, if the sound is calming and soothing, we're accomplishing something. Because Mm -hmm. our whole goal is to create this new um, categorization of our tinnitus, whether that's neutral or positive, as long as we're (laughs) reorganizing the way our brain is classifying the tinnitus. And I think we underestimate how important it is to have a therapeutic environment or have therapeutic sounds in our environment. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's so key because... We know when it's quiet, the tinnitus is going to be loudest, right? So when we think, oh, I just want to be in, in a quiet room and enjoy some some peace, if you have constant tinnitus, that's not what we're going to recommend you do, at least for, for a while until we can uh, really break some of those connections between the nervous system and, and the tinnitus, right? So... Uh, yeah, we, we need to find therapeutic sounds that can help mm-hmm. either distract the brain, calm the brain, both, whatever we can do to, to decrease some of this hyperactivity that we know is going on in in a brain when tinnitus is present, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, I like that point. It needs to be therapeutic for sure. Um, 